Hello and welcome to the section where we are going to be talking about rational expressions and fractions. But now we're going to be doing more and instead of expressions we are doing equations. That's right. This is where we're doing rational equations. Equations with fractions in them. So let's go way way back to the beginning. Like this whole section we will be appealing to the principles we learned way way back. So we had something that looked, I don't know, something like this. 3 fourths x plus 7 equals 1 sixth x. And in this, you could subtract 1 sixth over and combine like terms and stuff like that. But we notice that the fractions just added this element of complexity that we needed to get rid of. And so we had a method for getting rid of the fractions. And it was the least common denominator. Yeah. And once we found the least common denominator, we multiplied through by it to eliminate all the fractions. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So 4 and 6, they both times up to a 12. Yeah, times by 12, times by 12. So we did that, and when we took 12 times 3 fourths, it magically, ba-boom, 9x plus 84 equals 2 x. 12 times 1 6 is 2. And it's like a magic wand. bibbity bobbity no fractions anymore. And then we were able to say, oh yes, subtract the 9x over and get negative 7x and then we get 84 and we get oh hey look at that x is going to be a negative 12 and there wasn't any problem with domains here what's going to happen now is a very similar thing but we're going to have a problem that looks kind of like this 3 over x plus 5 over x minus 2 something like that equals uh, 3 over x minus 2. Huh. Now, again, we could combine some of these things together, pull that over, and be left with a 0 here. But just for the sake of uh, illustrating what can be done, uh, without combining like terms, what happens with this bibbity bobbity boo type thing here? Let's go back a little bit and see what happened in really slow motion. I'll use a different color so you can see. Here we had 2 times 2. Here we had 2 times 3. The common denominator then is 2 times 2 times 3, which is what 12 really was. 2 times 2 times 3. And here was a 2 times 2 times 3. And here was a 2 times 2 times 3. So when we do it like this, in factored form, when we multiplied here, the two twos canceled, and we got 3 times 3 was 9. Here, the whole thing added, multiplied it up to 84, and here, the 2 times 3 canceled with that 2 times 3, and we got the 2 that was left. Same thing is going to happen here. What's the common denominator? Well, it's x and x minus 2 timesing together. If we, without even adding the fractions, just multiply everything, because we now have an equal sign, we can do this, times everything by anything we want. And in this case, we want that bibbity bobbity least common denominator to times every single expression. Then what happens? Well, this x cancels, and we get 3 times this. That's 3x minus 6, plus the x minus 2 cancels, and we get a 5x. And here, the x minus 2 cancels, and again, bibbity bobbity oh my word, there are no more fractions. And having fractions with denominators of polynomials, that's, ooh, yuck. So this simplification is even more valuable than it was back in the earlier chapters where we did it with just numbers in fractions. And so what do we get here? 3x and 5x. Oh, we could subtract 3x from both sides, couldn't we? And it would, uh, that guy's gone and that guy's gone. Good, so we get negative 6 plus 5x equals 0, and we're like, oh, that's a sweet little equation there. Add 6, we get 5x equals 6, and x equals 6 fifths. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay, let's do one more thing, and then let you try these on your own. And again, these are going to be problems where uh, your ability to appeal to what we had done in the past with easier problems or less complicated ones, those same principles exist now, only now we're dealing with least common denominators that are polynomials. All right, let's pull that one up. 
So here this is the one that's worked out in the textbook. Here we have x over x minus 3 plus 1 over x equals 9 over x squared minus 3x. And yeah, the first thing we need to do is to, well, we don't know our multiplication tables with polynomials as well, so let's factor everything. And yeah, this is x, x minus 3, which means we can identify pretty quickly that x and x minus 3, that's all the common denominator here. Because we have an equal sign, we can multiply through by x times x minus 3, x times x minus 3, and if we do it to both sides, we get shazam! Some magic that occurs here. The x minus 3 cancels here, and we're left with x times x. Uh, here we have the x's cancel, and we're left with plus x minus 3 equals, and then on this side, the x and the x cancel, and the x minus 3 and the x minus 3 cancel, and we're left with 9. Now wait, do we know how to solve this equation? Yes, we do. It's a polynomial. So this is going back to the previous chapter. This is an equation polynomial, which means we're going to get it equal to 0, factor it, and then set each piece equal to 0. So let's get it equal to 0. Minus 9 minus 9. We have x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. Uh, then factor. This is a trinomial with leading coefficient 1. So it will happen quickly. Uh, negative 12 is the number we need to multiply up to. That could happen with a 1 and a 12, a 2 and a 6, or a 3 and a 4. Which one of these pairs, when one of them is negative, will add to a positive 1, and it looks like a positive 4 and a minus 3. So x minus 3 and x plus 4. Excellent! So we get x equals 3 and x equals a negative 4. Oh, I forgot that slow motion. I should write that out. x minus 3 equals 0. Set that piece to 0 and that piece to 0. Then when you solve them, you get x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. Does that make you feel great? Now, there is one piece of rational equations that we need to pay very close attention to because we multiplied through by these denominators. We have hidden a piece of information that was up here. When we remember what domain was, do you remember what domain was? This fraction, there are certain numbers we can't stick in this fraction. And it says right here, this original fraction in the equation, x could not equal a 3. Otherwise, 3 minus 3 would give us a 0. We also have a restriction here that x cannot equal 0. So you need to be aware that if we get down to the bottom and we get answers like 3 or 4, they would have answered this question just fine. But right here, they were illegal and off limits. So we have found one of these. This is called an extraneous root. And it is not an answer because it was barred from the very beginning of the problem. So with these problems, you must check your answers against the domains of the original expressions. So x could not equal 3, so that's why that one is gone. So this is our single answer. Good, so if you run into that, be sure to check the answers. Now let's run to the boards and see if you guys can do your own. Here are some problems for you to write down, then pause the video and give them a try. Press resume when you're ready to see it get done. All right, welcome back. Let's try number one. Uh, let's get rid of these fractions with the least common denominator. Let's factor this guy. This is x times x plus 4. Oh, how nice. Look at that. We have the common denominator is easy to see. It's going to be x times x minus plus 4. And so let's do x times x plus 4. x times x plus 4. And x times x plus 4. We have an equal sign, so we have an extra tool that we didn't have in our previous sections, which is you can times both sides of the equation by this least common denominator and get rid of the fractions right away. So this is 2x plus 8. Uh, the x plus 4, bibbidi bobbidi boo and we get a plus 3x. And equals uh, x cancels, x plus 4 cancels, and we're left with 7. So we get 5x plus 8 equals 7. And... Minus 8, 5x equals a negative 1, x equals a negative 1 fifth. Let's check to make sure that's okay with everything. What were the domain restrictions? x could not equal a 0, and here we could have x not equal a negative 4, and 0 and negative 4 again. So did we stay away from those numbers? We did. So this indeed is the solution. All right, let's try the other 
problem over here. Um, here we have 5 over y minus 3 plus 7 over y plus 3 equals 6. So the common denominator would be these two numbers times together, those two expressions. So y plus 3 um, is the common denominator. All right, number two, 5 over y minus 3 plus 7 over y plus 3 equals 6. Now, if we were to add these together, we'd times by y plus 3 on top and bottom for this expression, but we have an equal sign. So we can do the bibbity bobbity boo Let's multiply through by that least common denominator right away. y minus 3 times y plus 3. We're going to times this guy by that, and then we're going to times y minus 3 times y plus 3 right here and then we've got y minus 3 times y plus 3 on the other side of the equation we must multiply everything by it and now watch the magic occur the y minus 3 cancels so we get 5y plus 15 all right the y plus 3 cancels over here so we get 7y uh, minus 21 equals and then this is uh, y squared minus 9 that's a difference of squares right there. So we've got a 6 times there. We get 6y squared minus 54. Wow, look at this guy. This is a polynomial equation. Do we know how to do that? Of course. This turned out to not even have an x squared, so we could solve it nicely. But this one, this one, we need to get it all equal to 0. Let's combine like terms first so we see what we have. 12y and this is minus 6 equals 6y squared minus 54. All right, so when we have polynomial equations, we need to get it equal to 0, then factor it, then set each piece equal to 0. So subtract 12y from both sides, and we're going to add 6 to both sides. Let's get take care of all those at the same time. We get 0 equals 6y squared minus 12y um, minus 48 is what it looks like. All right, can we pull out a greatest common factor? Yes, 6 y squared minus 2y minus 4? Uh, 8. Sorry about that. Minus 8 equals 0. Good. Uh, now notice pulling out that greatest common factor allowed this to be a fast one. Yeah, I like that where we've got to multiply to a negative 8. That's a 1 and an 8 or a 2 and a 4. And what adds to a negative 2? Negative 4 and positive 2. There we go. So this is 6 times y plus 2 times y minus 4. And that's going to equal 0. So set each piece equal to 0. So 6 equals 0. Ah, that's crazy talk. Don't do that one. y plus 2 equals 0. And you get y equals a negative 2. And y minus 4 equals 0 gives us y equals 4. Uh, excellent. Now, last step, you must remember to check your work. Make sure we didn't get some illegal answer going on here when we multiplied through and cleared out the denominators. This one says that we may not use y equals 3. So y cannot equal 3, otherwise we blow up that fraction. This one, uh, y may not equal a negative 3. Did we stay away from those two numbers? We did. So these two are both answers. They're both solutions. And you can actually stick them in and see if they really work and you really get six when you add those fractions together. Nice job. Excellent work.